Now, the next corporate to uh, talk to us is uh, CSB Bank. I mean, uh, the company recorded a strong loan growth, especially the non-gold portfolio uh, grew very well. But there was disappointment on the net interest margin front. So let's uh, understand from the management uh, what the, what happened and uh, what is the way forward as they see it. Uh, Pralay Mondal is Managing Director and CEO at the bank. Uh, Pralay, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Thank you very much for your time. So just to kind of paraphrase the numbers uh, for our viewers, net interest margins in the quarter fell about 40 basis points, 45 basis points actually, uh, to about 5.4% uh, uh, or so. Uh, could you tell us what is the way forward? This is largely on account of a rise in cost of funds, etc., and also high cost deposits. Uh, what should we expect in the next couple of quarters? And uh, I mean, if you have a guidance for the full year, that'll be helpful. Go on. Thank you, Prashant, and thank you for having me. And good morning to all your viewers. I was just watching your previous interview with SBI Cards and was giving me nostalgic feelings of my building up the HDFC bank portfolio uh, more than a decade back. But coming to uh, CSB and uh, the name which you're talking about, I have been guiding it for the last three quarters that we are quite happy with a name of anywhere around uh, 5%. And this is significantly above that. And I said before, and I'm repeating it again, that we will not sacrifice growth for NIM. And you saw that we had a 30% growth in assets and 21% growth in deposits. So we are building a franchise and a few basis points here and there on NIM won't really matter at the end of the day. Having said that, we are conscious. And uh, when you see the overall report rate has gone up so much, and to acquire the right kind of deposits in the growth. We grew by, last year we grew by 5% in deposits. This year we have grown by 20%, 21%. And hence, obviously, there will be some cost of that acquisition. Having said that, we must understand that overall GSEC curve is flattening. And uh, uh, the, as I saw today morning, it was 7.12, 10-year GSEC. So gradually we'll see that stabilizing. Uh, we are already seeing this quarter the cost of deposits are stabilizing and sort of showing a slightly lower trajectory for the incremental deposits. So I'm not too worried on this. All right. Uh, hi, Mr. Mandal. Uh, good morning. You know, the sheet clearly was a little bit skittish because of those NIMS. And the problem last quarter was that the cost of deposits went up drastically, but the yields on advances didn't go up so much. But as you're saying, 5% will be maintained, so we take that. What about the loan uh, growth? Uh, you were, I think you were hinting at around 20 25% odd. What should it be for this year, if you could help us out uh, with that? And I'm just looking at, uh, you know, your release. Your other operating expenditure has surged up by 40% year-on-year and 24% quarter-on-quarter. Was there any one-off out there? Uh, not really. I think uh, we'll continue to have a slightly higher operating cost for three, four reasons. One is we are really building up the tech stack, as I said in the last interview also, because we are building the bank at this phase. And hence, our entire technology stack will change and there's a heavy lifting on the technology front this year. So you will see operating cost going up. We are also expanding our uh, uh, people front, whether it is leadership or front-end sales acquisition. We need a lot more customer acquisition in the bank because we are building across the and breadth of the country today. It's an incremental 100 branches. We are putting around 60, almost 60 branches in north and west part of the country. And hence, uh, those operating costs will keep going up. Uh, the okay. third, of course, is um, we are investing into other channels and other products and services because we don't want to be a pure play gold, gold loan bank. So we are investing into retail products, uh, SME products, uh, transaction banking we have launched. So a lot of other things right. which you're doing which will add costs. Yeah. But each of so these costs you will... So so, got it, Mr. Mondal. So, you are uh, sorry for interrupting, but you know, so we get the point. The other operating expenditure will remain elevated because of the factors you are mentioning. Uh, what about the loan growth? What kind of a number we could look at? I think one more point I want to add that these Please operating ahead, costs sir. we think are not really costs, these are investments and these have a payback period. And with yes. a lag, this will come down and have long term 2030 uh, uh, vision for cost to income is around 40 to 43 percent. Mm. Okay. okay. Loan growth, sir? Loan growth, I think we did around 30% this year. I've always said that we'll be around 30 to 50% faster than the system. Given next year nominal GDP will be 10 to 12%, uh, and hence we expect the loan growth to be around similar range. Uh, that's what the predictions are. Uh, we should be able to at least grow faster by 50 to 70% of the system next year. 
So, okay, so 10 to 15 percent nominal GDP growth is what your growth will look like, right? So, is that what we can assume a 10 to 15 percent growth? I said that's where the industry growth will be. That's okay. where the industry growth will be. We will okay. be 50 to 70 percent, uh, percent higher. So, we are not looking higher. at any okay. 20 percent. Yeah, we are not looking at anything below 20 percent. And okay. uh, it's difficult to believe that we won't be able to achieve at least a 25 percent kind of a growth. Okay, got that. So 25% growth is what you're targeting. That's the more achievable growth for you in FY24. As far as loan growth is concerned, I want to understand if there is any inorganic opportunities that you're looking at because you are highly capitalized. And earlier, I think you had mentioned that you may bid for an inorganic move. Some people are talking about Bank of Maharashtra as well. Do you want to quash any of those rumors, anything that's still on the horizon for you? I don't remember ever talking about an inorganic opportunity. Having said that, we always look at portfolios. Uh, uh, whether uh, it is a, a MFI portfolio or a retail assets portfolio here and there, but nothing has fructified so far. So we are looking at organically growing the bank uh, very aggressively. As you saw that our risk weighted assets and our capital consumption on the SME side of the business is going up, which is good news because we are now going beyond gold and also building other businesses. As our retail assets and other businesses grow up, the uh, capital consumption will keep going up for the right reasons. So we'll see that uh, organically will continue to grow around 25% higher organically. And if there's any opportunity comes, we will look at it. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> um, uh, Mr. Mandal, uh, just a last question from my side. You know, your uh, non-gold loan book is growing, has grown very fast, the fastest in many quarters. Uh, actually, uh, that's about now 50% of your incremental credit uh, loans given out. Uh, and you've guided that that uh, you plan to grow that. What is the uh, will uh, credit costs etc. also rise uh, because of that? Because gold loans have, I mean, the rate of growth in gold loans has slowed down, but it is still, uh, you know, very low. I mean, non-existent in terms of credit costs. Uh, not so much on the other uh, other side, which you plan to grow, and rightly so. So, just uh, some uh, thoughts on how this would pan out. So, so let, I think it's a very important question you're asking. So let me just explain this a little bit and give me a little time on this. Uh, the gold loan will continue to grow at least for one more year at the similar rate, and gold loan grew very well last year as well because we na need that business to uh, fund our growth in the other businesses because those are infrastructure and investment heavy, So which we are going to do in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, having said that, yes, uh, SME grew well. Wholesale is starting to pick up and transaction banking were investing. So to that extent, I think, yes, what you're saying is right. We will see gradually tapering down of the gold loan, but not next year from FY25 onwards. Mm. But uh, also we have to be conscious. You saw some of the reports coming from RBI and various other sources that on the retail side, one needs to be a little cautious. On the unsecured side, the growth has been very fast and things like that. So we also don't want to pick up the wrong side of the cycle at this point of time. So we are building our capabilities and processes and technology and customer acquisition on the liability side. Once we do that, we'll pick up on the retail assets only FY25 onwards. Meanwhile, SME will grow. So sure. it will be more in next year as well, Sonia. Yeah. Uh, sure, sure. Got it. Just one final question. And if you can keep the answer short, because, you know, we're running out of time. You uh, said that if any inorganic op opportunity comes your way or willing to look at it, are you looking uh, at a bank or is it an NBFC that you have in mind in order, you know, to to take that acquisition uh, opportunity forward? At my level from CSB can, Bank, I can only look at a portfolio. Uh, beyond that, I will not be the right person to respond. Okay, all right. Thanks a lot for joining in and appreciate your thoughts. Uh, we'll slip into a break. On the other side of the break, we have R. Subramanian Kumar of RBL Bank to discuss their Q4 earnings. Post that, we have V. Vedyanathan of IDFC First Bank to talk about their Q4 numbers as well. Stay tuned.